Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I am going to be going over kind of a year in review, um, what 2020 taught me and the things that I was able to accomplish this year that I set out to accomplish at the beginning of the year before we even knew <laughs> there was going to be a pandemic. Hello, my name is Kylie. I am an author, tuber, author, audio narrator, voice actress, and nerd, <laughs> professional nerd, and soon to be mom. Um, I just wanted to do this video because I feel like a lot of people, myself included, feel like 2020 was just supposed to be the year. 2020 was supposed to be the year we got ahead. We set goals, we set our intentions, we set our expectations, and we were going to hit them all. 2020 was the year we were going back to the roaring 20s. Everything was going to be fantastic. And oh, we went back to the 20s, all right, but not in the, not in the way we thought. I have seen a lot of people on social media and just going through in the voiceover industry right now in the acting industry it's hard for creatives right now because a lot of our work we can't do or we couldn't do it's slowly starting to come back um and you can't do it without getting like a covid rapid test now like for example my husband's on a shoot today and he had to get a rapid test before he even stepped foot onto the set because they just are you know they should they should be putting all protocols in place it's just a different world we live in right now and it'll be very interesting to see how 2021 goes but for things that 2020 taught me even though it was a rough year let me back up so at the beginning of the year i was on a roll <laughs> I was writing, I was immersed in Claymore, the Claymore world. I was getting gigs in the anime world. I was headlining a show. I was, you know, everything was going as it should. And then all of a sudden in March, things came to a screeching halt. Now, with that being said, um, audiobooks continued to be just as they no normally are. Um, totally awesome. I love the authors I work with, bringing their books to life. I got to work with a few authors like Meg Latour and Vanessa Fewings this year that I had always wanted to work with, and they were both fantastic, and their books are phenomenal, and I am so excited for both of them um, to have worked on those projects. And so we never really felt much of a a sting. We did on the on the ego front because when you're booking work, whether it be commercial or voiceover or animation or gaming, when you're on a roll, you want to keep that momentum going forward as much as possible. And it all halted. Um, luckily, we were able to work from home. Our studio set us up with equipment to work from home. So I think about June or July, we started working back slowly from home and uh, getting things of that nature done. So number one thing 2020 taught me is patience is important. And I suck at being patient. Um, you're always told if you want be careful what you pray, what you wish for, because whatever you believe in, God, the universe, fate, destiny, will give you opportunities to test yourself um, against what you prayed for or wished for. Um, like if you want more patience, which I don't pray for anymore because I've had lots of experience with being patient or like wisdom or calm or peace or anything like that, um, you'll get opportunities to exercise your calm, calmness or your peace or your kindness or your patience or your wisdom or your discernment, that sort of thing. And patience has always been something I struggle with. I attribute it to 
this world we live in where it's a microwave world where we want it and we want it now because everything is at our fingertips. Anything you could possibly want to know, you can Google it or, you know, look on the internet for it and you can find it. And you might have to dig a little bit for the truth, the true facts, but you'll, you're more than likely able to find it. Um, but that takes time and that takes effort. And not a lot of people I feel in these day and age want to make that effort. They just want it now and they want it told to them straight up. And patience has never been a strong virtue of mine. Um, one of the reasons why I think patience has never been one of my strong suits is because I am a control freak. I go nuts if I'm not in control. As you can tell by my channel, I love to play the mini god in, in my worlds, in my books, in my planning, in my daily life. And this year, the Lord was testing me. And Miss Bailey Sarian says, I did not study. <laughs> I did not study. And I am a learned now. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. So patience has been a big thing with me because also if you think about going to stores or going anywhere, getting takeout, um, you have to wait a little bit longer because protocols are in place for our safety and we have to be patient. And I think being patient with ourselves first in understanding that we can't snap our fingers and everything just happens, um, that we have to be patient. Just like with being an author, you have to write the books and publish the books and build your brand and build your backlist and build your readership. And it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, it can, but it's very, very few and far between. And a lot of the times, that I've things that I've learned, especially in the entertainment industry, is that people that you think are overnight successes are actually people who've been working in the background for like ten, five to ten years with just this stone mentality of I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I just have to be patient. I just have to wait a little bit longer. And that's kind of how I view writing now is it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. And 2020 was a marathon and we're not even done. So patience is the number one thing that 2020 taught me. And number two thing that 2020 taught me is I am not in no way, shape or form in control. No matter how much I plan, no matter how many, t you know, good intentions, good habits I try to put into place, I am not in control. Life happens, destiny, fate, universe, God, whatever you, again, whatever you believe in. For me, it's God. I tell God your plans and he'll laugh. Um, he, oh, he was giggling all year because number one, you know, my career in the voiceover realm was like on a roll. It was just getting better and better. And then COVID happened and it halted. And it was kind of like, okay, take a step back. And then I was like, I can still focus on audiobooks and on my writing. And on top of everything else, <laughs> he decided that having a child in the middle of a pandemic would be a fantastic idea. I am now. 25 weeks and one day pregnant. <laughs> I am due at the end of March of 2021. I am having a pandemic trial. <laughs> we are a statistic and it's just, it was really ironic. It was funny and it was now looking back, it's no time like the present. We're super excited to meet him. We can't wait. However, we just one more thing that we were just like, 2020, really? Seriously? Seriously? Is this what you think I need right now? And 
as you will see in a little bit when I explain it, yes, it's exactly what I needed. So along with becoming pregnant, first trimester took me out with fatigue. So my writing and creativity went down the toilet. I did not write for two and a half to three months and it hurt my little creative heart and soul, but I knew that I had to do what was best for my body, my baby, my health. And after I got over the hump of, wow, my life is not going to be my own anymore. I'm now living for someone else who's relying on me right now and who will rely on me when they get here and, you know, in this earth side. Being pregnant has really helped me understand I am not in control. There are things in pregnancy that happen that you don't have any control over, whether it be a miscarriage, whether it be, um, we had an umbilical cord scare thinking it was a velamentous insertion or a marginal insertion, which mean, could mean various things from induction to cesarean to hemorrhaging to loss of pregnancy. Luckily, everything turned out okay. It was just he was moving around too much during the first anatomy scan and the high-risk doctor alleviated all of our fears and there was nothing to worry about. Everything is totally normal. But there are things that we can't control that are happening in our bodies that we literally just have to trust the process. We have to trust nature. We have to trust the systems put in place for us to have this baby are there for reasons. Um, and that mentality of letting go and understanding, I have no control over if this baby comes out, you know, vaginally, cesarean, early, late, traumatic, easy. I have no control over that. And that has really helped my control freak mentality. And it's a healthy mindset. It's not a throw away the reins and let life happen to me. It's not about being a passenger. It's about being an educated driver. It's about understanding that, yes, this thing that is happening to me right now, I cannot control 100%. However, I can do all of the things that I know how to do to help my situation, exercise, eat healthily, try to get sleep even though you have pregnancy insomnia, work when you can, and just be good to yourself. And that's really helped me kind of shape my perspective on 2020. We weren't in control this year. Not a lot of us could control what was happening. It was out of our hands. We, we couldn't have speculated or bingo carded this into the universe. This just happened. Pandemics happen. Viruses happen. Outbreaks happen. It's historically a thing. It's going to continue to historically be a thing. The best thing we can do is be active, educated drivers in our own lives first, and then hopefully, you know, take that responsibility and just not be so concerned about letting life happen to us, but be active in, you know, happening to life, being engaged. And even though we're locked up, we're not going to work as regularly as we used to, we can still do things to educate, enrich, and make our existence meaningful and purposeful. And that's what pregnancy has really helped me through because there is a meaning to the things that I'm going through. There is a purpose for what I am going through. And at the end of it, I get this little life for the rest of my life. And it's amazing to think about. Three, which goes along with this I'm not in control, is to be kinder to myself. I am such a hard ass on myself. I am a workaholic. I am a work till the sun goes down and then some. I am the type of person who will work if I can't sleep. There is no shut off button. Well, there wasn't a shut off button to me. 
Um, and that's from being self-employed and having to really grind the last five years, four and a half years, almost five now, to make ends meet, to make it work. Same with my husband. We're both creatives. We grind at all hours to make sure that we can make ends meet and pay off our debts because we want to be debt free. And we both realized this year that we had to be a little bit kinder to ourselves, me especially because of pregnancy and the mini breakdown I had in the first trimester of feeling like I was a waste of space, <laughs> that I was wasting time, wasting valuable energy, sleeping and being in bed, even though I was nauseous and fatigued and just Oh, it was a fatigue I had never known before. And my husband had to take me basically by the hand and say, hey, you're cooking a human. Please let me do this for you right now. Let me cook, let me clean, let me, <laughs> let me do the dishes. You get your energy and work when you can work. That's the important thing. So I learned that sometimes I need to slow down. I need to be kinder to myself and give myself more grace. And that I, I can rely on my spouse, my husband, and that I can rely on my really good and close friends to um, remind me to be kinder to myself. The fourth thing that I learned this year is I am stronger than I ever thought I was. <laughs> I've always considered myself a strong, independent, streak type A person. But, you know, pain tolerance wise, kind of iffy. Um, have anxiety, you know, that sort of thing. But again, through this pregnancy and through the hardships of 2020, I am stronger than I thought. And I think a lot of people found out that we're more resilient than we think we are. And I'm really appreciative of that fact. I couldn't imagine going through this year with the hardships that my husband and I and my friends have faced without them. Um, and we have all grown closer, stronger, and better people for it. And I think that's one of the most wonderful takeaways from this year is that I am stronger than I give myself credit for. And it's not in a whole, I don't need nobody sense. It's I am stronger for the people that I surround myself with, for the information that I choose to take in versus the information that could just be given to me from social media. I actively choose to be educated. I actively choose to seek out the truth and knowledge, whether it be in my career, writing, in business things, anything like that. I choose to be actively engaged and that makes me stronger because of it and going through a pandemic has really made me realize how resilient I am and how much that I don't regret being that much of an introvert anymore. <laughs> like in a pandemic scenario, being an introvert is kind of a good thing. It's like, I miss my bookstores. I miss hanging out with my friends, but hey, in order to keep all of us safe and healthy, we can push it off or we can Zoom call and jack play Jackbox games together. You know, we can make it work in other ways. And number five thing that I have learned in 2020 is I have succeeded through one of the hardest years ever thrown at me. And I don't say this to make light of the situation. So back when I lived in Kentucky, when I realized my dream job was not fulfilling, was not the dream I thought it was gonna be, it had 100% totally let me down. That was the hardest year of my life. That was where I hit rock bottom. That was when I moved back to Tennessee on $600 to my name and had no idea what I was gonna do. I had a master's degree I couldn't use anywhere right now, right then and there. I had to wait tables, bartend in Nashville, and also work at Spencer's Gifts and just grind and make it because I was like, 
I'm starting over at 25, 26. I had absolutely no idea what I was going to, well, 24, 25, I had absolutely no idea what I was going to do. That was my hardest year. That was my rock bottom year. And this year, as hard as it's been, as rough as it's been, it hasn't been my worst year. And I think that's something that I can look back on and say, hey, it's been rough, it's been hard. However, it's not as bad as my rock bottom year. Yes, it's horrible that people are getting sick and dying. And yes, it's horrible that we're locked down and small businesses are going out of business and people are struggling. It's horrible for the overall nation and things like that. However, for myself personally, I have been extremely blessed and lucky to be able to have this mindset of I'm going to make it no matter what this year. And I did. I succeeded. My husband and I started our LLC this year and we are talking through things, um, really exciting endeavors for next year to expand on that LLC. We're having a baby next year. I'm planning to get back into the publishing game next year. And we've managed to get a lot of things done this year and get our house in order for hopefully a less stressful time for next year. So even if you feel like this year has been a wash, even if you feel like this year hasn't been your best year, just look back on your life and maybe maybe this is your rock bottom year, but maybe it's not. Maybe another year, another year in your past was a rock bottom year for you. And you can say and put in perspective, yes, this year was crappy. I'm not gonna say it wasn't. It was really crappy, like trust me, it was crappy. And just understand that even though it's crappy, it's a crappy situation, you're succeeded. You've succeeded because you're still here. You're still grinding. You're still fighting the good fight. And that is definitely one of the things that I can look back on for myself for 2020 and be proud of. That I kept moving forward in the AuthorTube community and NaNoWriMo and Camp Nanos and everybody in my author friends and stuff. They really, really, really kept me going. And I couldn't be more thankful to be a part of this community and to be able to look at other people's lives and their process and just be like, yeah, we're doing it. We're making it. We're making the best out of a bad situation. We're making lemonade out of lemons. And in my case, I would love a margarita, but I can't because I'm pregnant. That is what 2020 taught me. I hope that you're able to reflect back on 2020 as hard as it was um, with some smiles and good memories of things that happened. And I will see you in 2021 with my Q1 goals for the year and in a new place. One love, guys.